I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. At a House Budget Committee hearing last week, Congressman Jason Smith spoke about the American Rescue Plan. The Missouri Republican took President Biden to task for blaming Putin for inflation. Smith said that inflation had been rising before Putin, quote, ever moved any forces. Take a listen to his remarks here. Common excuse that we hear from our Democrat colleagues over and over uh, when it comes to high inflation is that it's Putin's fault. Um, first, when inflation was an issue, Democrats, folks in the administration said it was, it was temporary, it was transitional. They said it was a high class problem. Now they're saying it's Putin's fault. So what is your response when you hear Democrats say that inflation is high because Putin invaded Ukraine at the end of February 2022? Never mind the fact that inflation had been rising since the American Rescue Plan was passed and was already up by seven and a half percent before Putin ever moved any forces. So um, a couple observations. First, um, the, the recovery began in around June of 2020. So the second half of 2020, the economy grew by about 20%. It was the fastest recovery. So this idea that somehow the recovery began with the American Recovery Act is just plainly false. The, gro the growth happened, the real growth happened in the second half of this um, of 2020. And, and the thing that's kind of missed in all of this is that what happened with the economy is we made a huge, huge mistake. We shut down our economy. We shut down our businesses. We shut down our restaurants. We shut down our churches. It was catastrophic. And, and now we have the evidence that the health benefits of that were de minimis. So we got almost no health benefits, but we did incredible damage to our economy. Now, here's the interesting thing that happened. Starting in around June of 2020, most of the red states in America, Florida, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Iowa, Nebraska, Missouri, those states opened up because one of the things that Trump did that was really brilliant, and he made mistakes, anybody would make a mistake in that kind of crisis, but he allowed federalism to work. And he said, we're gonna let the states decide their policy. Now, Mr. McClintock, your state didn't do a very good job of it. Your, your state was a disaster. And by the way, the death rate when you adjust for age was no higher in Florida than it was in California. For the second half of 2020, Florida was com almost completely wide open and California, as you know, was completely shut down. So these problems in these, the, the problems that you're all talking about were in the blue states in America that made a bad, bad point, point um, bad decision on that. Now, so we had a big recovery in the second half of 2020. Do you know, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Uh, Smith, what the inflation rate was the month Trump left office? I know exactly that. 1.4? 1 1.4%. So how do you go from 1.4% inflation to 8.6% inflation in 14 months? You can't blame it on the recovery because we already had a ferocious recovery. You spent $2 that was trillion. Dollars. It was clear. Now, look, there were a lot of factors, but the match that lit this forest fire was the $1.9 trillion. Plus, let's not forget, then we passed a $1.1 trillion so-called infrastructure bill. So that's $3 trillion of spending. Now, let me just make one other quick point. Okay, let's make it quick because okay. I'm running out the of time. The economists, there were 14 Nobel Prize economists who said there'd be no inflation. M Mr. Chairman, with all due respect, you said there'd be no inflation. Wrong, 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 wrong. We now have, and inflation is the cruelest tax of all. It is the one thing, you talk about poverty, the thing that's gonna drive millions and millions of families into poverty is this high inflation rate. So I just wanna say this, um, another thing that our colleagues said, they try to say over and over, that inflation is a global problem. And I just want to uh, chat with you a little bit about this. The US economy is 25% of the entire world's economy, 25%. So one fourth of the world's economy, it's larger than the economies of Canada, France, Germany, Italy, and the United Kingdom combined. So when the U.S. decides to spend $2 trillion, it's going to have a global impact when they control one-fourth of the economy. What is your response to the given that the inflation in the U.S. is actually higher than it is everywhere? It's a great question. And in my opinion, 
the, the world is pretty do, do, dollar denominated. We are the world reserve currency. I mean, uh, Mr. Chairman, you've made that point many times. So this happened as the same thing happened in the 70s. When we have inflation, inflation spreads around the world. So this is like reverse foreign aid. We're actually hurting all of these other countries in the world because you know the euro is indirectly tied to the dollar. Uh, so many other countries basically peg their China, for example, is essentially peg their um, their yuan to the dollar. So we export inflation when we have infl inflation here, and that explains why if we bring our inflation rate down, Mr. Smith. I guarantee you the rest of the world will see a decline in inflation as well. So despite the rosy commentary from the Biden administration and Democrats that you'll hear uh, today, here are the facts. The economy shrank one and a half percent in the first quarter right. this year. Labor force participation is below what it was before the pandemic. The largest consumer price index has inflation up 8.6 percent. Since President Biden took office, inflation is up 12.2 percent. The Fed has already increased interest rates twice this year, with another increase poised to take place tomorrow. Real wages are down 4.2 percent since Joe Biden took office, and gas is up 110 percent. And the 2021 deficit at 2.78 trillion was the second highest on record, 517 billion more than CBO said it should have been. Why do you think what? Why do you think our what do you think our economy um, will look like? What effect specifically did the American Rescue Plan um, have on economic growth and inflation? Well, look, we had a there was a huge stimulus at the beginning of 2021. There's no question about it. And that stimulus was not the economic, American Recovery Act. I actually think that was negative for the economy. The stimulus, Mr. Smith was Operation Warp Speed. We had a we had a virus and that I mean a, a vaccine and that vaccine allowed millions and millions of more uh, businesses to reopen their doors and allowed millions and millions of Americans to go uh, back to work. I, look, I frankly think that if Trump had been president over the last we would not be facing this situation. We would have a booming economy. We lowered the poverty rate under Trump's policies to the lowest level in recorded history. For blacks, Hispanics, women, any group you want to talk about. You want to talk about reducing poverty rates in this country? Trump did it. Exactly. Uh, in your statement earlier, you made the comment that we should cut taxes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's quite interesting. What the Democrats keep trying to do over and over is to spin the Build Back Better, the Build Back Broke bill. They keep revitalizing it, which is over a trillion dollars in tax increases. Uh, taxes on U.S. energy to increase gas prices, but yet they want to continue to spend money. So would you say that passing the Build Back Broke Act, as I refer to it, which would increase taxes on Americans, increase taxes on U.S. energy, and also increase government spending, do you think that's the sol solution to our economy right now? So uh, can I say something nice about a Democrat, Mr. Smith, because I am a kind of a nonpartisan guy. I mean, Joe Manchin saved this country. Joe Manchin saved this country. If we had passed that at that time, that bill was was by many estimates, four trillion dollars. I mean, I, I shudder to think if you think, you know, eight, nine, 10 percent inflation is bad. If we had passed that bill, I think we'd be we're talking about inflation rates that could have hit 15 percent. Thank you. I want to ask Dr. Coronado. In February of 2021, you took to Twitter to dismiss concerns Dr. Larry Summers raised about inflation and the American Rescue Plan. You gave the concerns a thumbs down and said he was invoking an inflation boogeyman. Later the same month on Twitter, you pushed around a tweet from a New York Times author who said in his post that the fear of inflation has become a greater threat to the American economy than inflation itself. A month after that, you said people with terrible track records forecasting who refuse to acknowledge and learn from their mistakes do not deserve to be at the center center of our or set the terms of policy discussions. In fairness, you were not alone. The Biden administration, numerous Democrats have similarly dismissed uh, inflation. But given what you know now, would you agree that dismissing inflation concerns back in 2021 was a mistake? Um, I, I also, 
as a forecaster and I make my living as a forecaster, I have to acknowledge my mistakes. And so I definitely underestimated the persistence of the supply chain issues. Uh, I would say part of that is just that the pandemic, we all expected it to be short lived and go away. And in fact, it didn't. And we're still dealing with supply chain shutdowns in China today. Uh, so that's a real problem. And we've built that into our thinking about inflation. If I think about the current rate of inflation, I think it goes into three main buckets. One is those pandemic related uh, frictions that have disrupted the entire global economy. We were in, at an incredibly integrated place of global supply chains and efficiency, and that entire model has been disrupted by the pandemic. That was exacerbated also by a shift to spending on goods over services. That was unanticipated. I mean, we should have in retrospect maybe anticipated that everybody was hunkered down uh, and not spending on services, which is more than two thirds of consumer spending. And so they had a lot of spending power to spend on goods and that strained global supply chains. My hope is that supply friction that we've uncovered will see some improvement in productivity and efficiency investment into those supply chains to improve their resiliency as we go forward. The other bucket that's the dominant one right now is food and energy prices. That is tied to the war in Ukraine. That's not something that came from the American Rescue Plan or anything uh, that the Biden administration done. That came from the decision of Vladimir Putin to invade Ukraine. Uh, and so we need to be thinking about, again, ways we can address the supply side of food and energy to give some relief to U.S. consumers. I, I see that my time has expired. Food prices continue to go up prior to invasion of Ukraine as well. They've continued to increase, but we have the data. Thank you.